Are we on? Yes, we are. Hooray! Hello, uh, Southampton! Uh, this is the second time I've been to Southampton. The first time I literally I came and uh, got a boat and left. Uh, so, uh, so it's nice to have been here uh, for a bit longer than about ten minutes. So, uh, so that's lovely. Uh, that's an interesting group. Uh, okay, so. Um, uh, oh, well, uh, I've I, I really enjoyed the comedy this evening, and I really enjoy a lot of bright clubs there. They're very science-centric, uh, and I, I like the fact that, uh, that we've got a mix in the room. But what it, what it make, makes my life a bit harder, because I'm used to audiences who kind of just get all the in-science jokes uh, that I make. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to make sure that I, uh, I, I don't you know, go straight in with Heisenberg's uncertainty principle gags. <laughs> Um, well, I'll warm you up to that, maybe. Who knows? Um, okay, so, uh, yeah, so I do science songs. Um, I'm trying to get that as, as a thing, a, a genre, geek pop. Um, it's, it's, it's still very niche, even though I've been now doing it for about eight years. Who, who knew? I thought it would spread. Um, uh, but, it, but it didn't. It didn't. So, um, so uh, it's, it's pretty... It's, there's about five of us. Uh, who do geek pop? Uh, and, uh, I'm, I'm plugging away. I'm plugging away. Uh, I, I've, I've released two albums of geek pop, and, I'm, and the, the, the next one is coming shortly, in the next few weeks, uh, hopefully, maybe even two. Uh, so, uh, so I'll do, I'll do uh, some songs off the previous albums, and uh, maybe one or two off the forthcoming one. Um, and I guess you can decide whether it's uh, worthwhile pushing geek pop any further, or maybe. Uh, you can you can tell me give up. It's time, it's time to give up. Eight, eight years is long enough. Uh, okay. Uh, so um, well, where shall I start? I think I, I think I'll start with um, uh, with a, a little calypso. Uh, do, do you like calypso music? Yeah. Yes. Who doesn't like calypso? My, my calypso is called the genetics calypso. Uh, uh, DNA in brackets. The ge genetics calypso. Um, it being, I do, I do uh, some. Uh, I, I do like it's comedy, so I do some funny voices. I try, I try and keep the my my vocals relevant to the musical style. Um, some people do, though, find this kind of racist. Uh, <laughs> Within every little cell that's in all of us Is a tiny little thing called a nucleus But it's the stuff inside that really caused the fuss Cause it's the stuff that tells our bodies how to grow into us It's a very long and complicated molecule But for something so small it's very influential Is that even on? No? Shall I, shall I come off mic? It is on. Just need, some, just need some more volume. Uh, uh, where were we? Uh, it's a very long and complicated molecule, but for something so small, it's very influential. It could make you grow big and strong and tall, or if it's like mine, it makes you hairy and small. It's DNA, DNA, three little letters with a lot to say. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Hey, that's DNA. You come in little packet called chromosome. You get half from your daddy and half from your mum. It's a double helix ladder with a code made from dead nucleic acids and it's very long. Well, the adenine pairs with the thymine. The guanine pairs with the cytosine. And when you got enough pair, you got a gene which will tell a cell how to make a protein. It's DNA, DNA, three little letters with a lot to say. Deoxyribonucleic acid, hey, that's DNA. Oh, 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 and that might make a situation like a baby being born with eleven toes or a blood disease or a massive nose but don't make babies with your cousin cause you should know it multiplies the chances that the defects show it's DNA, DNA three little letters with a lot to say deoxyribonucleic acid hey that's DNA, DNA ho ho 
DNA. It could make you crazy, it could make you gay, it could make your hair fall all away, it could make it plum brown, blue or gray. DNA, oh DNA, it could make you want to fight or want to pray, it could make you drop down dead today. Oh, that's DNA. Oh, 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 oh. Of, uh, of, oh, that's going to be on the, uh, the forthcoming album, uh, which is, um, I, I spent actually mo more than half of my life being a uh, secondary school teacher, and um, part of that involves uh, telling people about physics, which is great fun. Um, you know, you use the fact to graph generators and they're tricky children, which is just perk of the job. Uh, and, um, uh, but then uh, part of my other role is I'm, I'm a deputy head of year, and I'm, uh, I'm responsible for some of the pastoral needs, uh, which also uh, leads to some interesting uh, things. We've, we've had a lot, of, uh, uh, a lot of talk about sex today, and actually that's, uh, that's partly how my day started. Um, I, got, I got to school and, um, and, and my head of year said, uh, there's uh, potentially an interesting conversation you need to have. And she said, forwarded me an email that come from the music department. In the music department, they have these little practice rooms. Uh, and uh, and there was an email from a teacher who said, I was, I was going into a practice room, which I, I normally use, and there was a student in there who was gently hunched over. Uh, and I was like, oh, where's this going? Uh, and, uh, and he asked him to leave, and he left in quite a hurry with his trousers undone. Um, and uh, and uh, so I he was like, uh, we're not entirely sure who that is. We've got a video of them going in. Don't worry, it's not a video of them masturbating in the uh, room, but uh, it's a video, we're not sure who it is. And um, can you, she, she think you can identify them. And uh, knowing that if I could identify them, this means I have to have a really awkward conversation. I was like, no, no idea who that is. Never seen him before in my life. Uh, hopefully I've avoided that one. But, uh, that's an awkward one. But, um, that's the sort of thing that happens. Anyway, so we have to educate them about their, about, you know, the way they uh, put themselves out there in the world. You know, should you be the person who's caught in the music room with your trousers down? No, that's maybe not the image you want to project. Um, but also, uh, this day and age, we have to be really careful with social media. And um, uh, we, we had a number of incidents uh, surrounding social media. So what we like to do is we do an assembly and I do a funny song to make it all nice. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so I did a song called Don't Put Your Bottom on Facebook. <laughs> Uh, it's got kind of a sing-along chorus, so if you feel like singing along by the end, please go for it. Don't put your bottom on Facebook. Don't Instagram things you'll regret. If you're twisted and bitter, don't post it on Twitter. Cause no one will let you forget. When Billy was 18, he selfied some pictures of his bottom parts. But now he's a grown-up, he still has to own up to the pictures where he looks like an absolute idiot. So don't put your bottom on Facebook, don't Instagram things you'll regret. If you're twisted and bitter, don't post it on Twitter, cause no one will let you forget. In the school play, young Sally was singing and struggling to hit the right pitch. Joe tweeted, she sounds like a dying hound. Now everyone knows Joe's a big meanie. So don't put your bottom on Facebook. Don't Instagram things you'll regret. If you're twisted and bitter, don't post it on Twitter. Cause no one will let you forget. Jimmy thought he was cool when they passed him the joint. So he posed and he smiled as he sucked. 
But the, he was a minimal of him being a criminal, and his mother has told him he's farly grounded. So don't put your bottom off his Don't Instagram things you'll regret. If you're twisted and bitter, don't post it on Twitter, cause no one will let you forget. It can be hard to wipe things from memory. They will search you when you go for a job. So think before you send. Would you want your children to see you behave like a not very wholesome individual? Don't put your bottom on Facebook altogether. Don't Instagram things you'll regret. If you're twisted and bitter, don't post it on Twitter. Cause no one will let you forget. It's more with feeling. Don't put your bottom on Facebook. Don't do it. Don't Instagram things you'll regret. It's not worth it. If you're twisted and bitter, don't post it on Twitter. Cause no one will let you forget. which is a fascinating and very diverse subject. Actually, one of the things I like writing about Sai, I used to just be a singer-songwriter, um, and I used to write about love and things like that, and, uh, and uh, hundreds of people have done, millions of people have done that, it's very hard to say anything new. Um, but of course, when you're, uh, when you're writing about science, there's literally millions of researchers around the world coming up with new material for you uh, every day, and that's quite useful, as it goes, because... Uh, because uh, other, other people have to pay writers a lot of money for that stuff. Um, I don't... Uh, okay, so uh, what should we sing about? Uh, we've done a lot about sex. But actually, I, I might do a, an internet segue. Uh, that song is about the internet, uh, in a way. And this song is my other song uh, about the internet. Because actually, I, found, I find the internet fascinating. Um, I find it amazing that people do their own... Anyone could be a researcher now, in a way, uh, with Google and Wikipedia. Uh, of course, a, uh, a slightly less disciplined researcher than, than you lot, uh, and uh, with very, very uh, uh, unsubstantiated facts. But nevertheless, you could do lots of research on, on the internet. And, um, of course, we've had, to, we've had a sexologist talk tonight, and uh, a lot of people do their own sexology research on the internet. In fact, uh, I, I, a, a enormous number of Google searches are sexology researchers, I'm told. Um, and uh, so I was, I was writing a song about the internet. I, I thought, it's amazing, it's, changed, it's a game changer, the internet, isn't it? It's changed the world. Uh, some people think for the, for the better, some people think for the worse. Um, and I, I personally think for the better. And, and I, I am kind of addicted to watching short videos on the internet. Um, but of course, I, I like to watch short videos about science. Um, it's all strictly clean um, uh, for me. Uh, so that's basically the, the gist of this song. Um. Well, he was down so very low, no one understood. Unemployed and lonely and his life was no damn good. An Apple Mac for company was all that he could find. So he's sitting on the internet just looking for good times. He's down low, he's down downloading his good times. <laughs> 250 million websites with anything he could hope to see. 500 petabytes per day across the planet digitally. A universe of data should make a stimulated mind. But he's sitting on on the internet and looking for good times. Now, internet addiction, that's an affliction of the modern day. Entangled in the web, the addict gets his kicks by clicking all his time away. And his life just passes by, sitting on the internet and loading his good times. He's down low, he's down, down, loading his good times. Maybe too many good times. All the lonely people seeking company just want someone to talk. So, so the internet's the place to be And it changed communication It made the fax machine deceased And who predicted Twitter would bring revolutions to the Middle East? Three billion folks now living happily online Sitting 
Surfing on the internet, downloading their good times But there's good and bad that comes from every type of new technology One quarter of all searches of our pornography So set your private browser and nobody will find The history of where you've been downloading your good times You download, you down, downloading your good times Yeah, your dirty good times And you can choose whatever suits your mood I always go for something clever, never nothing rude I'll only watch a sex scene on a nature documentary Only click on anal, reading up on OCD And if I want some hardcore, I'll give string theory a try Sitting on the internet, downloading my good times Three-way, on mass debate, on special relativity Hot brunettes, on the open university I like a big bang, not a gang bang Richard Feynman sitting on the internet downloading my good times, man, and down low, down, down, loading my good times, yeah, my geeky good times, and down low, down low, down, down, loading my good times. I'm gonna go for a math trumpet, so no, that one. <laughs> Interracial cream pies Sitting on the internet Downloading my geeky good times And down low, down, down Loading my good times Yeah! You know what gets me touchy-feely? It's Jinakalili! <laughs> and actually, I did that gag uh, And it just so happened that Jim Akalili was next on stage And, uh, and as I was walking off, he shook my hand and said thank you <laughs> This song doesn't go anywhere from here, so I'm just going to end there. Okay, so um, I guess probably this is uh, something like my last. Um, let's see how we go. Um, right, um, we've talked a lot about love this evening, and, um, and uh, I, I find uh, there's lots of animals that is kind of, I, I often end up writing uh, about animals, I don't know, they're quite fun. Um, and, um, and they have some interesting uh, uh, mating habits and things like that. Um, and there's a few animals that mate for life, there's not many. Um, sadly, not always humans. Um, but uh, one animal that does make for life, and actually it's, it's quite sad for that animal, is the albatross. The one that the albatross. And uh, it's quite lovely about albatross. You go, oh, they make for life, isn't that delightful? Um, but of course, uh, they tend to uh, get caught in, our lo uh, in fishing lines and things like that, or eat bits of plastic that are in the ocean, and then they die. And then they don't mate again uh, because they, their one true love has gone. And that's so, and that's very sad. And as a result, the, the wandering albatross is dying out. So uh, I was asked to write a song um, uh, for uh, albatross conservation, I guess, uh, to, to raise the plight of the wonderful wandering albatross. But what's interesting about the albatross, of course everyone knows about it from, from the, uh, the, the rhyme of the ancient mariner. And uh, it's, uh, it's good luck for sailors uh, to see an albatross. And the reason, it's actually a very sensible reason why it is, it's because they glide everywhere. So if there's no wind, they're stuck. They're really shit at flying. <laughs> but they are the best gliders in the world. And they can, they can happily glide. They sleep gliding thousands of meters up in the air. And they, they, can, they, can, they, can, they can just glide for like 5,000 miles quite easily. Uh, and occasionally they'll pop down for some food. 
Uh, and then they'll, they'll glide back up again. It's quite remarkable. So if a sailor sees a uh, uh, if a sailor sees a, an albatross, they know there's wind and they know they're going to be able to sail. So uh, I did this one in the style of a, um, a cruise ship singer, um, <laughs> which is actually quite quite fitting in Southampton because uh, I noticed when I got off the train there was a sign saying cruise ships that way um, and that's the first time I've ever seen that at the station um, so, uh, so I think the albatross is quite fitting to it uh, so, okay, uh, so here's a little bossing over about the, uh, the wonderful lovely wandering albatross <laughs> Albatross, I love to watch you in the sky. <laughs> For when I see you on the breeze, floating gracefully with ease, all I simply do is sigh. <laughs> <sighs> Albatross, you really come down from on high. Except for when you feed and every other year to breathe and finally to die. Oh, your wings were not involved for flapping. Although no other bird has wings as wide. Now you may fly a little crappy. If there isn't any wind to give the upthrust to your wind that helps you glide <laughs> And the trolls, I love to watch you in the sky For when I see you from below, I know the wind will always blow And I'll sail on with a sigh <laughs> I like spiders. I like the spider web is stronger than steel. I think that's amazing. Uh, anyway, where were we? Uh, we were, we're about to do a sighing solo, actually. Uh, that goes a little bit like this. Albatross, you will glide. 5,000 miles before you dive in and attack to catch a squid and make a snack for your chicken make it smile. <laughs> oh, you fall in love so madly and so, so madly that you make for life. Now, your numbers dwindle rather sadly. For you may never love again if your true love tangled in a fishing line. <laughs> Albatross, I love to watch you in the sky. For when I see you on the breeze floating gracefully with ease, all I simply do is sigh. Ah, Albatross. You really come down from on high Except for when you feed And every other year to breathe And finally To die No more gliding No, 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 no I didn't bring that many CDs with me because uh, I nearly ran out. Uh, so I've got three sets. Um, uh, uh, six CDs. Uh, that's three times two. I can do maths too. Um, so uh, there are five for each. They're very reasonable. Uh, just approach me at the end if you want one. And uh, if you want to put your name down to, uh, uh, in fact, just 
if you uh, follow me on Twitter, at Johnny Berliner, you'll find out when the new album is out in the next couple of weeks or so. Uh, and then it'll be available for download on my website, johnnybelliner.com. It's all very easy, you see. Um, right, okay, I'm going to finish up with a song, because uh, really I'm a physicist at heart, so I'm going to sing a song about a mis uh, uh, one of the biggest problems in physics today, as it goes. Uh, they're looking for it at the Large Hadron Collider as we speak, um, and that's a substance known as dark matter. Um, if you, if you, uh, we've actually known about dark matter for a very long time. Back in the 30s, someone looked at galaxies and went, oh, I can see about this much stuff, and it's spinning about this fast, and so it should have blown itself apart, uh, but it doesn't. Um, and so they were very confused, and the only explanation for that is there's more stuff pulling it gravitationally. Stuff that we can't see. Uh, so they called it dark matter, and actually, as it turned out, three quarters of the stuff in the universe had to be dark matter for that to make sense. Um, and that was very baffling, because where do you hide three quarters of the stuff in the universe? Um, except, what that meant was the universe should be closing in on itself, uh, because it's actually really, really heavy. Uh, so they thought, well, why don't we just measure the universe expansion and we'll see how much the expansion is slowing down. Then we'll get a good idea of what this dark matter is doing. So they measured the expansion of the universe and it's not slowing down, it's getting faster. And that made even less sense. So they invented something called dark energy. Um, <laughs> thereby, I'm, I'm pretty sure when a physicist uses the word dark, uh, it's shorthand for, I've got fucking clue what's going on. Um, uh, so, um, so anyway, they're hoping to find some particles that look uh, like dark matter in the Large Hadron Collider. Of course, they might not, because it doesn't look like anything. And there's a good chance that we've just got physics completely wrong. Um, and that's how I write something about dark matter. Oh, when you look up in the sky at night, you're seeing a mystery. The physicists are in a twist about the forming of the galaxies. It's a very heavy issue. It's an issue of gravity. It's a dark, dark matter. When it, no, I don't have to know the words. <laughs> There needs to be a substance we're just not detecting But it's hard to find material that just ain't reflecting Or maybe it's our theories, they need some correcting It's a dark, dark matter So why does it feel like? How does it smell? If you had some in a bucket, well how could you tell? Could you sit on it or sculpt it or eat it as well? It's a dark, dark matter We haven't got a clue what the stuff consists of It's not made from any particles that we have a list of And now it's really pissing all the cosmologists off It's a dark, dark matter Scam of the Zizou! Scam of the Zimzum Zamazoo! Scam of the Zizou! was fairly demanding. It stretched us to the limits of our understanding. Then opened up a can of worms about why the universe is still expanding at an accelerating rate. It's a dark, 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 dark Waiting for something to happen. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if 
we do, do we have time for one quick bowl? One, two, three. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Go on. Oh, go on, he says, go on. Go on, go on. Actually, well, uh, well Johnny's just picking his guitar up again. Uh, you, you can rate how much fun you've had this evening. Um, by placing over, over there where you put a sticker at the beginning of the night, you could place a button from a jar, it's very scientific this, into, um, uh, you can place it in a cup. There's one by a very smiley face, one by a less smiley face, and one by a sad face. Um, I think you'll understand. Do you understand this very complex rating system? <laughs> as to whether you have enjoyed this evening and also there is a mailing list over the door where you came in to sign up um, to hear about future events um, so do that and uh, let's hear one more final song for the evening from Johnny Bellina uh, Jess gave me a little request which I'd really like to do I haven't played it for a long time so it may come out a little bit ski whiff um, but uh, it's now uh, Halloween's officially over which means it's Christmas um, and, uh, and I do, I, I do have a Christmas song uh, because I think it's really important to remember what Christmas is about and celebrate the man who made it all happen, Michael Faraday. Uh, and of course, Michael Faraday started the Christmas lectures at the Royal Institution, uh, and he did that like 120 years ago, and they're still going. And I think that's pretty amazing. But what's amazing about them is. Michael Faraday was not a rich chap, and he was working in science in a time where you only did science if you were rich, and he was very much about opening science to rich, poor, young, old, male, female. He allowed women into the Royal Institution. That's pretty cool. Um, and, uh, and not only that, of course, but at Christmas, it's, it's the Festival of Lights, and he literally wouldn't be able to turn the lights on if he hadn't come up with electromagnetic induction. So, Christmas, it's very much about Michael Faraday, and uh, that's what this song is about. So, it's a power ballad, of course. <laughs> and it's Christmas time, I don't know power ballad, please. It's Christmas time, it's time to remember. A man who shared his wisdom with the world. No, he never made a sermon on the mount. Christmas lectures. Again! <laughs> it's like I'm Spider Man.
electrolysis. Let me glory now to bright. And it's more useful than the time. The Christmas message that you bring. You touch me more than Jesus or the Queens. Cause Jesus only saved our souls. But you save people in the actual world. Cause the chemicals we make possible in pharmaceutical and the Queen's beaches just don't watch me in the end of it. Michael Faraday! <laughs>